Thank you for joining me as I'm reading through the scripture again during this particular season. I'm in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is the second law. Moses gave that law at Sinai. Much of it we read in the book of Exodus and then into Leviticus, a little bit in the book of Numbers. But as they concluded their 40-year wandering in the wilderness, Moses felt it very important, I'm sure God had something to do with leading him in that way, to reiterate what the law was. And so Deuteronomy means the second law. It doesn't mean it's uh, secondary. It doesn't mean that it's a, it's a law that was given to supersede the previous one, but rather it's the second iteration of that law. And that's what this particular passage is all about. We're in chapter 10 here, and in this passage, Moses is recalling that time when, uh, when the people rebelled, and he uh, went up and up back to Mount Sinai and prayed on their behalf. And, um, and it was during that particular time that he was reminded that the Lord chose the, the Jewish people. In fact, as he's speaking to these people who are in the second generation that came out of Egypt, they were children at the time that uh, they came out of Egypt, or some of them perhaps weren't even born at that time. But he, he goes on and he says, Yet the Lord set his heart in love on your fathers and chose their offspring after them, you above all peoples as you are this day. Now, we can understand in this generation that certainly a number of generations have passed since that particular time, but it still is that his choice has been made of you and of me to walk with him. He chose you. It wasn't that you chose him. Yes, you probably did. But before you had the inkling of doing that, before you had that desire, he chose you. That's an important point. And he's not going to give up on you because he chose you. That's, that's so very, very important. We live in a day where we live so much by emotion that we think that when our emotions are low that God has forsaken us. But that's not true. That's not at all true, and we need to resist that idea. But it is an idea that the enemy has perpetrated upon us because he has made this particular society so prone to living by its feelings and, uh, and not by the facts of, of, uh, and the truth of what he says in his word. The fact is that the Lord chose you. Peter will later on tell us in the New Testament that you are a chosen generation. A chosen generation. It says at the beginning of 1 Peter that he chose the tribes of Israel. And that's an important idea. Later on, or earlier, I should say, at least in the, um, in the way our Bibles are, um, are configured, Paul had told us that he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So this particular idea is not new. Jesus even said that in the Sermon on the Mount, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. The idea of God's choice of us is a very, very significant one in the hearts of his people. We, we need to rejoice in that. He's the one that set his affection upon us. Jeremiah was chosen before he was even born that he would be the prophet. And, and, and that's true of virtually every one of the prophets. We don't always have the, um, the, the, the verse that, that pinpoints that idea. But nonetheless, it's still true. God has chosen us who are his. And that's a comforting thought to us. If I have chosen him, and that's the source of my confidence and my faith in him, then just as easily I can reject him. But if he has chosen me, 
then I have a, a, a greater assurance that when I go through times of sin and depression and struggle, he's going to revive me because he's the one that chose me. He saw something in me, not something good in me in the sense of my goodness, my innate goodness, but he saw something in me that he wanted to redeem, and that was the image of God that he placed there when I was born, when I was conceived, actually. And so this is the reason why he has chosen us and why that idea is so important to each one of us. I hope you'll rejoice in it. Revel in the fact that he chose you before the foundation of the world. Father, we thank you for the ways in which you have worked in each one of our hearts. Thank you that you have chosen us and you have appointed us to go and bear fruit. And I pray, Father, that you would use us Lord, we come from different circumstances. We have different uh, experiences. We have different giftings. We have uh, all kinds of differences. But yet the thing that we have in common is that you're the one who placed your image in us and you chose to redeem that image in us. For that, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day.